Although I was a bit confused by its uses at first, I've come to love the new little feature called the contextual taskbar in Photoshop. So here are 10 ways you can use this new taskbar to make your life easier. Now, if you don't see the contextual taskbar inside of Photoshop by default, first of all, make sure that your Photoshop CC version is up to date. And then from there, just go up to window and down here to contextual taskbar to reveal it down at the bottom of your canvas. Now, since there are a lot of small things that just make your life a bit easier, with this taskbar. I'm just gonna be running through them relatively quickly, but I'll leave a little title at the corner of the video so that we can keep track of all 10 points that we talk about in this video. So point number one is that when your image layer is selected, you can now more easily select the transform adjustment. So with the image layer selected, I'll go down here to the taskbar and choose this option here. This will automatically enable the transform tool without needing to press the keyboard shortcut command or control T. And it gives you a more direct way to flip your layer by choosing these icons right here to flip horizontally or vertically, as well as you can just right click inside the photo to access all your favorite transform adjustments to warp your image. Now from there, the taskbar also allows you to easily commit to your changes just by pressing the check mark directly inside of the taskbar, where previously you would need to go up to the options bar. So it's just a little bit more hand movement with your mouse. Now it just makes life easier because you have a check mark right at the bottom of your canvas. So pressing that will save your change. Now, besides the transform adjustment, the contextual taskbar is also super helpful when using the type tool. So for example, selecting the type tool by pressing T, if I click on my canvas, now rather than having all my settings up in the options bar, I have a few basic settings now in the contextual taskbar. I could change the font in this setting. I could change the text size with this setting here. I could choose a different color for my text just like this as well as I can have easier access to the characters panel by clicking on this option right here, which will open up the properties window containing my character adjustments. From here, I can do additional text settings such as line spacing, letter spacing, character height, and so on. All of those extra settings that are not found inside of the contextual taskbar or in the options bar are more easily accessed now with this little button here. So whenever you're working with text, the contextual taskbar will make your life a bit easier now. Now getting into selections, this is the main area that the contextual taskbar really shines because it allows you to modify and change your selection way easier than ever before. So for example, let's say I want to select these objects. Before, I would need to go and find the select subject or remove background buttons somewhere inside of my properties panel or maybe even choose one of my quick selection tools. However, we now have easier access to that just by choosing select subject or remove background down here. So with the desired image layer selected, I'll choose select subject for example, and it will automatically create a selection of the subjects in the photo. From there, I can now easily modify these selections in a few different ways. The first way is I can click on this option here to feather my selection. For example, if I wanted to have a softer edge, I could go and choose feather selection. Now in this option, I could type in a desired value for the amount of feathering or the amount of softness I want on the edge of my selection area, and I could click OK. So this just makes it a lot easier to modify how your selection looks before you even add it to a layer mask, and you don't even need to go into the Select and Mask workspace anymore. Besides the feathering adjustment, we can also expand and contract our adjustment as well by choosing the same icon as before, this Modify Selection option, and we can choose Expand or Contract Selection. For example, let's say I want to expand this selection area outwards from its current position. So I could go to expand selection. This can be helpful if your current selection isn't perfect or you just want to remove a bit of fringing perhaps by bringing your selection inwards just a little around the entire subject. In this particular case, I'm expanding my selection. So the value that I type in here will move my selection area that set number of pixels outwards. So with 30 pixels set, I'll click OK and it will move that active selection outwards by 30 pixels. Now with those modifications to our selection, all done inside of the contextual taskbar, I can now more easily add a layer mask to cut out the background by doing it directly inside of the taskbar as well. So rather than going to the layers panel and choosing the layer mask here, I can now have my active selection and then choose the layer mask icon directly inside of the taskbar like so, and it will create a new mask for me without having to go over to the layers panel. So it just makes life a little bit more efficient. Now going back to selections, we can also more easily fill in our active selection areas, which is super useful when you want to modify an existing layer mask. 
For example, if I grab my marquee tool by pressing M on my keyboard, and I click and drag out to create a marquee selection. Let's say that the area inside of this marquee selection, I want to be visible on my layer mask. So I want to add back visibility in these areas. That would mean that I need to add white to my layer mask, which some people forget the keyboard shortcut for. Because previously, you would need to set your foreground color to white and then hold Alt or Option and Delete to fill that active area with white to apply it onto your layer mask. But now to make life even easier, you don't need to remember those keyboard shortcuts and instead you can just choose the fill option here in the taskbar and choose between a variety of options here. You can even choose content to wear fill, which will remove anything inside of your active selection. But for this particular case, I want to add something back to my layer mask. So with that layer mask selected, my active selection, I can choose this fill option and go to white, which is visibility in a layer mask, click on that. And now that will fill the active selection with white and make it visible on my layer mask like so. So it just makes life a little bit easier to edit your layer masks if you don't remember the keyboard shortcuts for filling things with your foreground or background colors. Now, speaking of shortcuts, rather than remembering how to deselect something with Command or Control D, you can just press deselect down here in the contextual taskbar and your job is done. When you're finished with a selection, it'll just get rid of it for you and you don't need to remember anything else. Now, the final interesting use for this adjustment is that you can now more easily create a border selection around an object. So for example, I'll just right click on this layer mask and choose delete layer mask. This time I'll go and create a selection around the objects in my photo by choosing select subject. But this time I want to not just select my subject, but I actually want to select a small border around the objects in my photo. So to do that, what I can do now is choose this masking option and go down here to select border. With the select border option, I can set a width for my border. So let's choose a thicker border amount. I'll do 12 pixels here. I'll now click OK. This will change the selection area from just the objects to now, if I zoom in a little bit, you can see it better, to now we have a border selection instead. So what we can do now is fill this area with a color, for example, by going to the fill option and then going to a fill color. From here, I can choose any color I'd like to fill the outline with. Let's say a darker orange color like this, for example, or a red color. I'll click OK, click OK again, and it will fill that active border selection with the color. I'll choose Deselect. And now we've added a selection around these objects. This isn't necessarily the best way to add an outline to something, but it certainly does work. And it's an interesting use case for the contextual taskbar inside of Photoshop. The contextual taskbar doesn't necessarily change Photoshop, but it certainly makes some things a lot more efficient, especially if you struggle to remember the hundreds of keyboard shortcuts in the program. Viewers of this channel and students in my course called 21 Day Photoshop Expert, which I'll leave a link for down below if you want to check it out, have often mentioned how shortcuts are one of the main things they struggle with remembering inside of Photoshop. But with the help of this taskbar, you can get away with needing to remember fewer shortcuts than ever before. So if that sounds like you, hopefully this video was helpful. But anyways, my name is Brennan from BeWellCreative.com and I'll catch you back here next time.